Alright guys, well it's been some time since I've done a video and I thought I should explain. Um, basically, uh, I've been really busy in kind of my personal life and things that I've been uh, doing in the real world and, you know, I have a full-time job and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I thought I'd kind of take a, a move out of a Happy Console Gamers Playbook and basically just sit down and talk about games. Um, so I thought today it would be cool to talk about Bravely Default and uh, the demo that came out uh, recently in January, I think it was around January 6th or something like that. It's a game made by uh, Square Enix, and it was supposed to be a sequel for another game, if I'm not mistaken, but they ended up uh, kind of spinning it off into its own thing. It's a, it's a JRPG, it's a, it's a classic kind of turn-based RPG, but the, um, there's a new kind of twist to, to the gameplay that they've added. In the classic uh, j RPGs, you have uh, your move. Essentially, you just you know pick what you're going to do, cast a spell, use an item, basically kind of hit play, and then you watch those actions play out, and then the enemy attacks, and then you counter, and so on and so forth. Um, but what, what Bravely Default has done is it's added this element of basically collecting your, your turns. So you can default, which means that you go into a defensive stance, you absorb less damage, and you keep a turn, essentially. You perform no action. Uh, and then you can brave, which means that you can spend those those points that you've, uh, those brave points that you've earned by defaulting on uh, con uh, moves that you would perform in con concession. So, um, for instance, if you've got four characters, you can default on all, uh, all four characters uh, a total of four times, and then you've got four uh, moves that each character can perform. And the same goes for enemies; they can they can brave and default as well. Um, so it really adds this interesting gameplay mechanic of of uh, um, this risk and reward system and, and counter and and uh, it creates uh, almost like a comboing system in the regular turn based uh, RPG um, uh, gameplay mechanic. Um, so it really adds this interesting element. And then on top of that, so you've got that interesting gameplay mechanic, and then you've got um, you know, you've got job classes uh, that, you know, have been throughout the Final Fantasy series. Um, I believe there's about 25 of them. You've got everything, you know, knights, time mage, um, summoners, uh, black mage, white mage, uh, red mage, like all the, like, kind of classic uh, classes. And you've got job points that you earn after every um, battle, you know, just like your XP and you can um, basically get new abilities and commands that you can perform um, as your job class um, pro progresses. Um, one cool thing is you can switch job classes without a penalty, and these uh, you get these passive abilities that you can um, use. Uh, there's a point system for them. There's four points. You can spend those abilities on the different classes, and you can kind of re-roll those points as you see fit. Um, one of the cool ones that I like is from a bard. Um, it, it, you get it once you get to like level four, I believe. With a with a bard, you get a passive ability called buff up. There's a lot of different ones, and you can kind of combine them in really unique and interesting ways. Um, and it makes for um, this. I don't know. It just has this really good thought out dynamic to it. Um, as far as the game itself, the artwork is fantastic. Uh, it's really reminiscent of um, Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh, um, the music is the same. It's it's scored and it's really great. Um, I actually got the uh, I, I've ordered the game already. I've pre-ordered it and I got the collector's edition, which comes with a soundtrack and art book. Um, so I'm really uh, kind of interested in checking that out. The other interesting thing about the demo, um, it's it's its own unique experience from what I understand. And you're in this uh, you're repairing this clock tower and you do these quests to to repair the clock tower and as you do each quest and you you um, you know you finish completing a, fighting a boss or whatever, you get items that you can then take and um, use in the actual game when it comes out. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, the other thing uh, too is it has this kind of almost Farmville uh, sub game where you're repairing this other this town and um, essentially you you take villagers and you say okay repair this shop and it, it takes like an hour to do in real time. Um, but if you use Street Pass, you can collect more villagers from your friends, essentially, and you can spend uh, less time on those those things by uh, taking those villagers and, and something that took an hour. If you put two villagers on it, would take 30 minutes, and so on. So it has this kind of weird like Farmville element, and I believe they they're gonna have the whole 
pay to play thing where you can kind of skip that stuff if you want to pay money but I don't really care about that it's actually kind of this cool little element that they've added and I'm not gonna you know spend any extra money on something like that but uh, I thought that was really cool but anyways I, I just kind of wanted to gush on it a little bit I'm uh, it sucked up 13 hours of my time and I just I really like the game um, uh, it's been a while since I've played an RPG and frankly I, I I just can't, you know, I, I don't know, I just I just really dig it. Oh, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, so you can change your difficulty uh, of the game at any time, which is kind of something that they're doing in games now. Um, but one one thing that I thought was cool, and I, honestly it has been a while since I've played an RPG, so I don't know if this is typical of, of uh, single-player RPGs nowadays. Um, at least I haven't played it, recent ones. But um, you can decrease and increase your um, encounter rates, which is really cool if you need to grind, because you can just basically every step you're going to encounter an enemy if you have it maxed out. Or you can turn it off completely. And actually in the demo there's a part where all the bosses sort of unlock and you can continue to fight them again and again. So at that point you just turn off your encounter rate and you just completely skip them. Uh, you know, the random encounters, because at a certain point you don't even need to. So I thought that was really cool. It doesn't punish you for wanting to do other parts in the game that, you know, you may encounter inter enemies on. Um, the other cool thing is, and ever since Final Fantasy VII, I've wanted something like this. Um, when your play is happening, since you can collect all these moves, and, you know, theoretically you can play a total of what, like, uh, um, what is it, like, 16 uh, actions in a turn if everyone's using all their default points all in one go you can fast forward uh, two times or four times the regular speed which um, makes things really nice especially if you're on, on a long fight that you're just going through the motions uh, and that kind of thing so it kind of gets rid of the punishing element of uh, 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 particularly JRPGs which is they suck a lot of time <laughs> um, needless to say regardless of all that I spent 13 hours on this thing anyways even though it's just a demo um, but uh, it's fan it's just great and uh, I can't wait to see the, the game when it actually comes out. Um, so, anyways, that's me talking about Bravely Default. Uh, yeah, see you guys later.